Please welcome to the stage, John Doyle. I love, I love actors. Sometimes they drive me crazy, but I love actors. I had the great good fortune to work with what now seems like an endless supply of actors. I've also been blessed to work with some famous people, people who were once quite simply highlights in my music collection. I treasure the experiences of making art with actors, and I'm humbled by the memories. No experience, though, was more fulfilling, more joyous, more disciplined, more fun, more wonderful than being in the room with the lady that I've been invited to honor this evening. It seems unnecessary for me to highlight all her remarkable roles and awards. She is, to all of us who work in the arts, quite simply the tops, the leading member of that small club of Broadway ladies, some gone, some still here, who we know and love by their first names, Patty and Bernadette and Elaine and Ethel and Barbara and Cheetah. A few, a few years ago, I was approached about doing the last Candor and Ebb and McNally show, The Visit. It was one of those, how did this happen moments. In the theater, people talk about being in the room the rehearsal hall, the, the place where the real work happens. John Kander and Terence McNally and Roger Rees and Graziella Danielle and Cheetah Rivera were all in the room. And then there was me. How did that happen? I remember one day feeling somewhat overwhelmed when I realized that Anita and Nicholas Nickleby were right there in front of me looking up to me for guidance, looking with all the humility and vulnerability that is the core of a great actor. When you stop and think about it, you have to own the fact that this is the first woman to sing a boy like that who killed your brother, forget that boy and find another. <laughs> this, this is the woman who worked with Jerry Robbins and Leonard Bernstein and Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon and Hal Prince and John Kander and Fred Ebb. Hardly intimidating at all. But I got to be in that room. I got to experience that joyous, positive, naughty life force, working and crafting and laughing and caring. So much caring, so much class. As Fred Ebb said, Whatever happened to fair dealing and pure ethics and nice manners? Why is it everyone now is a pain in the ass? Whatever happened to class? Whatever happened to please may I and yes thank you and how charming? Now every son of a bitch is a snake in the grass. Whatever happened to class? Cheetah is the epitome of class. On, on my early directing jobs, I worked in companies where the leading lady or the leading man led the company. It puts a different, more important meaning to the word leading. They led by example. Sadly, it's a little bit of a dying art, but Cheetah leads a company. Cheetah shows the others how to behave. She doesn't tell them how to. Well. Not unless she has to. She leads by example. Cheetah is quite simply Cheetah. My husband and I have a photo on our wall that makes us very happy. Two people meeting each other. Two people who make a difference. Two people who care and love and laugh and are probably mutually naughty. Pope Francis and Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> What, what are the greatest skills in our crazy profession? Sticking it out, remaining true to yourself, holding on to the realization that by this time next year, 
nobody will even remember who won the Tony, and treasuring the moments that matter. Treasuring what it was like on the opening night of the visit on Broadway when Cheetah walked on and somehow the world stopped. Treasuring those moments in the room when you ask Anita and Anna and Rosie and Velma and Aurora if she could try turning her body the other way, just like Jerry and Gower and Bobby did. And she does it, and she makes it more significant, more remarkable, more magnificent than you ever dreamt it was possible to be. Treasuring the sheer amount of human decency that her family has given to Cheetah. Her daughter, Lisa, her beloved mother and daddy gave it to Cheetah. Being a mom has given it to Cheetah. Being a true friend has given to Cheetah. God has given to Cheetah. Those are the living components of decency. I'm often asked by young actors, what's your greatest piece of advice? I always respond, be decent. It may not get you the first job, but it sure as hell gets you invited back. People, people will always, always, always invite Cheetah back. She's still vital, she's still sexy, she's still vibrant, and she's still young. I simply can't wait until the next time we get in the room together. I can't believe that I was blessed in becoming a friend of Cheetah Rivera. In looking back, it's always important to look forward at the same time, to hope for everything that might still be. And now, on behalf of the Actors Fund, it is my privilege to present the Actors Fund Medal of Honor to Cheetah Rivera. was that person they were talking about. I haven't seen her in a long time. Are you having a wonderful time tonight? Yeah. So, so am I. So am I. And I, I thank you. I thank you. Well, I've been around for a long time. So is the Actors Fund. We've <laughs> been around a very long time. Um, the Actors Fund and I have known each other for uh, many, many years. My first show was Call Me Madam with Elaine Stritch, and that was like 19... <laughs> it was 1952. <laughs> I'm just so glad to wake up in the morning. I am, I thank God. In the, I, just, I just pick one up, ladies, and put it down, and then put the other one up and put it down. And if it moves smoothly, you have a little more time left. So use it. Well, first of all, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, but John, thank you. There, there's, I can't even speak. Thank you. Thank you for being you and, and teaching me so, so very much. I called John father in rehearsals. I still call him father, um, not just because of the Pope, but he's like a father in rehearsals, and he sits back and he looks, and he straightens everything out just ever so quietly. And he's, I, I, I just can't thank you enough for everything that you've said about me tonight. I only hope it's all true. <laughs> I'll never, I, I won't know. And I saw Wayne and Robert Montano and all those kids dancing like that. Uh, thank you, all of you. And 
it just reminds you of, of the wonderful things that have happened in your life. And I've always been grateful. But when you get a little reminder like that, it kind of blows me away. And it kind of makes me want to meet that person. <laughs> so I'm going to look in the mirror when I go home tonight. Because <laughs> I still don't believe it. <laughs> well, the Actors Fund and I have come a long way together. And congratulations to a great, dedicated, life-saving organization, which has been our backbone and allowed us to feel protected and taken care of. I hope I've been an example of dedication in a profession I am so proud to be a part of. Thank you, Joe Benincasa, and my... Well, Allison, you still don't realize that Brian, your husband, is my husband, too. <laughs> you just won't accept it. <laughs> now I've made the announcement. But thank you, Brian. I call him Bri for, for, for years. And um, Michael, for your, Brian, uh, Brian, and for your care and devotion, and all, all of the people that work for the Actors Fund. Congratulations to the other honorees. It is an honor to share this time with you. And most of all, thank you from the bottom of my heart to the Actors Fund. And oh, by the way, there's still a lot of salt in this shaker. 